while it's nice to be indoors and clean for a change uh, recording a video, but uh, as promised, uh, I'll be installing um, an intercooler and charge pipe tomorrow from uh, Burger Tuning, who uh, had an excellent price on an intercooler. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching intercoolers, and you know, there's a lot of products out there. Evolution Raceworks makes a nice one, but uh, they're very expensive, and I think uh, there's some cons that come with those huge intercoolers. Um, unless you're running on the track all the time and you're, you're wide open throttle and you need that huge intercooler, uh, I think it's better to find a high density uh, medium size intercooler. And the guys over at Burger Tuning have an excellent unit. So here it is, the Phoenix Racing high density intercooler. You can see the fins are very pat packed very tightly in there. It's a stepped intercooler, so you see it steps up over here so you get more surface area in the front uh, if you have an m bumper that would look absolutely badass in there uh, since it's more exposed in the front but even not, if you don't it still looks great with the m sport bumper this is an evolution raceworks charge pipe you can see where it connects to the throttle body up here um, should be pretty straightforward installation okay today's the day this guy's going in this guy's going in. Here you can see the old charge pipe. And we'll get a look at the old intercooler versus the new intercooler once I get everything out. For now, I'm just going to put the car up on a jack stand so I can get under there and uh, start working. Well, first, uh, you got to remove those clamps on the bottom of the intercooler, which were kind of being a pain in the ass for a sec. So I came up with something I think works pretty good, so I'll show you. There goes one of the clips right there. You see it? Just put the flat head on, two flat heads, one on either side, and then the clip will pop loose. Then you gotta remove that bolt. And then on the other side, one other Torx. And that should drop the intercooler because it's only mounted by one, two screws and one clamp, two clamp. That one's already loose. I did the double screwdriver trick. And then it gets it all loose. So, time to continue and drop this thing out. Sorry for the Bon Jovi in the background, but I'm not crawling out from under here to change it. So, anyways, both clamps are off over here. There's one. Just pry it right out of that notch when you see it on that clamp right there. And then it'll come off. Two. There's the other guy, so it's about to drop. <laughs> and make sure your face isn't under it so you don't get sprayed with mouse nests or whatever the fuck that was and here she is oh here they are side by side the original and the new get a better angle on that so you can see the new one dwarfs the old ones beautiful intercooler um look at also the density of the fins see look at the original oem one it's quite a bit of space between those fins the new that. So I'd say it's about double. Double the fins equals double the cooling capacity for the most part. So now I've got to get the old charge pipe out. This is a great time to do both at once. So get the charge pipe and the intercooler if you haven't done both because now that the intercooler's out the charge pipe will be a lot easier to uh, to deal with. If you don't have a nice long flathead screwdriver like this, approximately a foot long, go buy one because it's just like I keep this with my heavy duty tools and this thing has done many a jobs. But anyway, so I got the uh, charge pipe off. That was super simple. You can actually pry a little bit right here against it just with a turning motion and it'll just kind of pop right off so you're not wrestling with it because my hands don't fit in there very good. And then there's one rubber nipple down there connecting into a, a bushing type fitting there it just pops right out people whine and complain about how hard this thing is to take out I bet you it's gonna come right out of the bottom but let's go see if I'm wrong all right oh, where are you let's do some wiggling and I don't think I can hold this while I wiggle so actually it looks like maybe coming out the top might be better yeah. anyways I'll let you know how I did it when I'm done with it because I can't hold this while I uh, wrestle this pipe well, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, but it uh, wasn't that hard either. Probably about five minutes. 
you got to pull it out from the top i don't think you can get it out from the bottom even with the intercooler out uh, it helps with the intercooler being out because you can push on it down there which actually gets you some slack but once you get about where my thumb is as far out as that well i guess it would be positioned like this where my thumb is um, you're gonna have to rotate it like 180 degrees and kind of just almost screw it out to get all these wacky turns um, past everything it needs to get past down there and be careful of stuff obviously don't get caught on a wire and rip it I almost did that um, anyways so let's have a look so here's the uh, new unit here's the old unit we're gonna transfer our sensor at the top over here to the new one um, vacuum line here goes to here um, just try to position the top and bottom portion of your charge pipe if it's two pieces like mine to uh, to match the curvature of the existing one as best as possible and get your clamps on there and keep them loose in case you need to turn it later make sure you keep your o-ring that came out on the uh, old uh, charge pipe at the bottom it was in here keep that mine fell out when I was wrestling with it and I almost didn't see it also there's one in here keep that you're gonna reuse it in here from here to here oops here always lubricate your o-rings before putting them back in because uh, that'll make things easier so here's something else I want to show you um, so you're going to pull your old metal retaining clips off the end of your old uh, charge pipe here and uh, just take the metal off, leave the plastic on there, you're not going to reuse that plastic junk. Then you'll wind up with this piece of metal here, right? And that's your new retaining clip for your charge pipe. So you're going to pop that on there in the same way. Nice and simple, right? Something like this. And then it pops in. Now, if you kind of manhandled that clip when you're taking it out, you might notice, well, mine was, this was protruding, this was protruding, but because I had bent it out with the screwdrivers earlier, this one was not, which means it wouldn't have been as secure as it was uh, before, because it's supposed to have three areas of retention. Mine would have had only two, so I basically just kind of bent it back into shape, and then I got all three there, so it'll hold on nice and secure so that doesn't come off. Just another little tip. Lay them down next to each other so you get your orientation correct. Vacuum, vacuum, sensor spot, sensor spot. We're going to move the sensor from here to here. Sensor installed with new stainless bolts and lock washers with a little thread lock blue for good luck. Uh, polished up the tube with some stainless cleaner. Just because. Now I'm going to install it from the top down, definitely. Tube down here is more narrow, easier to snake down. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so my plan of attack is, well, I'll show you. First, I was going to try to put the, you know, the rubber coupling on and put the whole thing in as a unit. That's not happening. So the easiest way I can see to do this is first put the shorter piece on, attach it to the throttle body, put your sensor's vacuum tube back on, leave your two clamps on there ready in a position where you can tighten them later and I left that bottom one on there just enough so it would stay on but loose enough so I can slide the bottom portion up into it so I'm basically just going to lubricate this end of the other section and then just pop it right in there tighten those down connect it to the intercooler and that should be that just excited to get this beast in the car which is the highlight of today oh plan worked pretty good it's good to have a second person being up top watching when you guide it in there but uh, it popped in nice hose clamps still in position so I can tighten them down later I left it loose for now in case I need to rotate the bottom to align it properly with the intercooler um, but yeah plan worked out pretty good um, so the o-ring remember you have one that came out of the old one or the out of the old charge pipe it's in there at the top to the throttle body and then you have another o-ring down here at the bottom all right and it only goes one way it's, it's not re not reversible so make sure uh, it's seated in there the correct way right now you can see it in in the correct position if you put it backwards it won't really seat right and you'll see it like a little wrinkly I did that <laughs> the first time and noticed it was backwards so I used the other one uh, as an example just to go by what it should look like and uh, that's the end result, so now I'm going to put the intercooler up and uh, hopefully everything's pretty aligned. Sorry for the weird angle, I'm under the car, but uh, 
getting this thing to slide up there. This freaking flap is in the way, so, and it's part of the whole shroud up there, so unless you take that bumper off, it's just, you can't get past it because it's in the way. You try stretching it around. It was enough for the old one to come out, but this new beast isn't really cooperating trying to get in there, so I'm going to actually make a little cut here and here so I can more easily flap this down and then I'll just flap it back up and that'll be fine uh, and plus it's gonna get all bound together by the belly pan and whatnot so uh, that's the only way I can see to easily do this a little two inch cut here a little two inch cut here so I can bend this and get it up there cuz it's just not working okay it's all done gonna test it now for leaks there it is in there I was considering cutting this out and just leaving it open but uh Considering the bumper on the M Sport is just small and it's not like the M bumper, or the full M bumper with a big opening where you'd really see it. You'd really only see it on the M Sport on this model if you're far away. So to lose the protection aspect of this grate for bigger rocks or anything like that for the slight aesthetic increase just from far away, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not even going to cut it out. Okay, you know what? I changed my mind. I decided to pull it out. Or cut it out, I should say. So, bloop. So now it's gone. And I used an oscillating tool for that. Pretty easy to just go in there and cut all the bars. But it looks more aggressive now. I think it's pretty cool like that. All right, now that I cut that plastic grate out, I noticed something else that I wanted to share. So I don't know if this is the BMW design floor or what, but up here, this piece of plastic, you can tuck it back up there, but there's no screws or anything that hold it. So going to happen is air pressure is going to get in here and it's going to start pushing this down like it was like the way I found it just now. I didn't do that during my installation. And what's not apparent here is, well, when you start going fast, you know, let's say 80, 100 miles an hour or whatever, air is going to get in there and it's going to pull this down like that. And essentially it's going to block half the surface area of the damn intercooler. So the good news is that this thing's actually loose up there. Thing's actually loose up there, so it's you see that? So you don't have to cut across the top, it's really just hanging on by about an inch on either side. So I'm gonna cut this whole piece of crap out of here. And uh, I also checked because I didn't want to mess with the brake duct integrity over here by cutting that out, it's not gonna affect the rigidity of that brake duct on either side. So I think that's a good mod. Remove this crap so it doesn't at high speed start blocking your inner cooler like a wind sail. Uh, so anyways, let's, uh, make that mod, and, uh, I'll show you afterwards. Okay, so yeah, I cut it out with a utility knife. That was the plastic that was in there, and it was essentially just a wall up there, and it was bending down. It's not very secure. You can see there was really no way to keep this in place. There's no screws to stop it from doing that flapping thing I was showing you before. So, now it's actually really nice in there, because... The air can go in and hit the entire span vertically of the uh, inner cooler. Any, any remaining air that comes in through the scoop is going to go up to the uh, the main radiator and other coolers up there. So I think all in all you're going to get air coming through here. You're going to get air coming through the grills and it's just going to hit this entire array of, uh, of heat exchangers that function more efficiently in my mind, especially considering that this thing was definitely coming down at high speeds before that I showed you so that would have literally blocked all the air to the intercooler so uh, that wouldn't have been any good you can see there well, the uh, cut out and installed thanks again burger tuning for the uh, intercooler like I said earlier in the video I think that this is an outstanding intercooler for the price uh, it's not overkill like a lot of those uh, intercoolers out there like the Evolution Race Works and some of those bigger intercoolers. Unless you're on a track that's just going to create turbo lag for you. Um, this intercooler has great volume, high density fins, uh, and best of all, it's an outstanding price. And the build quality is, seems to be great. Uh, great looking unit. Check it out at BurgerTuning.com. Um, Next video, we'll see how this thing performs. I can't wait to see uh, what it's like to not have heat soak. <laughs> All right, gotta go pick up some Thai food, so it's a good time for some quick testing.
All right, guys, so I'm in the car now. You can see the ambient air temperature outside as recorded by the vehicle, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I mounted my gauge just temporarily right up here, so when I stick this to the sunroof, you'll be able to see what's going on with the gauges. So you can see currently my air intake temperature is the top left is 78 degrees, which is six degrees above ambient. Now, before, when I used to run, it it would go like 30 degrees Fahrenheit above uh, ambient when you're pushing it hard. So uh, once the car warms up, I'll change from map zero to map two and uh, we'll push it and see uh, how much improvement we've made. Okay, now that we're good and warmed up, we can uh, push it and see what kind of temperature differences we're getting. I forgot to mention before, 30 above ambient was on map zero which is stock we're running map two which gets a lot more hot so we're actually doing great on temperatures running map five just a quick test and then in the next video i'll uh really push it